Hey Funnel Builders, Mike Killen here from sellyourservice.co.uk and today I want to talk to you about pricing a marketing funnel for your customers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a fake proposal essentially, really high level. Um, the format of which by the way is taken from this book, Alan Weiss, uh, Million Dollar Consulting. I highly recommend that you check it out. This is probably one of the most valuable books I've ever read. Um, I've listened to the audio guide a bunch of times now. This proposal is very, very loosely taken from what he provides. And I want to go through how you would price it. So what happens is when we put together a new proposal for a customer, I know I constantly bang on about standardization and productization and processes and systems and shit. But the reality is when you're putting together a proposal for a customer, occasionally it's completely off the wall. It's completely different from anything you've ever built before. And it's very difficult to know how you're going to price that when it's something that you haven't dealt with before. So I want to share with you how you can price any proposal, even if you haven't delivered it before. And I'm going to share with you the method that the customer will go through to justify the price in their head. Now, what I want you to remember throughout this whole process is emotion sells and logic closes. People buy for emotion but they commit because of logic, or they justify it because of logic, okay? So this here is our proposal. You can see here it's pretty high level. I'm going to be honest with you, the majority of our proposals pretty much look like this now. Uh, I don't know if that's because I'm known in the industry or respected or whatever, but I actually don't have to provide that much information anymore. The first part here is objectives. Then in the middle, we've got metrics, results, and then this bit here that says don't show them this bit. I'm going to go over that in a minute. The objectives are what the customer wants, so the outcomes for the customer. Okay, This is ultimately the future that they want to see. So I could call this, instead of objectives, I could call this the future. Right Now in your proposal, like I said, I have got a template available at betterproposals.io. I'll also link the proposal workshop uh, below. Um, for you to, to sign up and I'll teach you how to write a marketing funnel proposal or it's, I think it's a blog post maybe. The objectives are the future. So here we're going to increase the numbers of traffic converting into leads and sales via the website. Okay, This is their future. They're also going to have the ability to acquire new AML leads at a break even cost. These are the things that they want and we've determined that they want. They want to increase the lifetime value for each customer and generate new sales from customers and subscribers on automation. This sounds pretty obvious. This is pretty generic, but actually what we find is a lot of people basically go after this. They might reword it, but this is pretty much what they go after. Metrics are how we can measure we're successful. A really important point is that you can never guarantee results ever. Okay, you can't do that. And it's ludicrous to assume that you can. Anyone who can guarantee results uh, probably is talking bollocks. Having said that, there's no reason why a customer won't want to work with you to work towards those results. It's vital that your customers understand that you can't guarantee results, and they can't either. I guarantee if you ask your customers, hey, well, do you guarantee results to your customers? They can't guarantee it, okay? Having said that, we are going to say these are the metrics we're going to work towards. This is how we're going to know that we're successful. And a business that knows what they're doing and a business with the right budget will understand this and go, yeah, we understand it's important to test and that it's a, a long-term process. You can't do it overnight. If you could, chances are the bill would be 10 times higher than they thought it would be. So this is what we're actually aiming for. Metrics, conversion rate of warm traffic to squeeze pages of 5%. That's super low. I like to estimate low. I like to estimate conservatively. During 2018, a growth of 10,000 new email subscribers. So that tells you roughly how many subscribers I need to get during the entire year and how many I need to get for the month there. 10% sales conversion rate of new customers. Sorry, new subscribers. So of those 10,000 new subscribers, I need to sell to 1,000 of them. And 2,000 sales total across 2018, 50% of them being new. The results are, this is what happens and this is what they get if they um, achieve those metrics. Okay, so that's what the objectives of what the future looks like. The results are the actual outcomes. And this is often, sometimes this part of the thing is called the outcome. This part here is essentially what the customer will read in order to justify the price. And interestingly, you actually don't need to give an itemized list of everything in the price if you talk about the results. So the results are going to be $1 million in sales from 2018 from 2,000 sales at $500. Cool. 
an average yearly value of $500 per customer per year, high, higher revenue to invest in more products, they'll also have a larger market share, they'll reduce future sale acquisitions cost, and it will position them, name, as a leading brand or category leader. What we do now, it's very, very, very simple. I will go through this proposal and I'll say, well, what am I going to need to buy to get this for them? And I'll think, well, I'll have to do a 10 part email campaign for new subscribers. And I know that it will cost me about $2,000 to get someone to do that for me and do it well. And that's also uploaded into their CRM system, their autoresponder design emails. So $2,000 to get 10 emails built, written, uploaded, all of that taken care of. I'm going to get someone else to do that and take care of that in their active campaign or their Marketo or their uh, Infusionsoft or whatever. I know it's about $2,000 to cost me. And if I don't know that, I'm going to go out and ask. So the first thing I might write is actually just a wish list of all the things I want to do. And chances are you're going to use the objectives as the um, shopping list for your customer. You're going to use the objectives as a guide on what it is that actually needs to be done on this particular project. We also have a Facebook remarketing campaign, and I know that for a year's worth of remarketing campaigns, it's probably going to cost me about 10 grand. Again, I might sit down with an actual, well, I would sit down with a remarketing, a Facebook remarketing expert and say, what do we need to do? What's it going to cost? And they're going to say 10 grand, not including traffic. I need to create a bunch of squeeze pages and the copy for those squeeze pages, maybe the thank you pages as well, um, and the delivery pages. And I'll say to them, okay, well, uh, this is everything that you need to do. This will be about $5,000. It would cost me to get someone else to do that for me. And a sales funnel, pretty simple sales funnel of a, a sales page, checkout page, maybe an upsell page and a delivery page. Nice and simple for, and uh, um, you know, like a yeah, sales letter, essentially $5,000. To me, this would cost $22,000 in total to get off the ground. Just to do is $22,000. The total to the customer is 66000 because I'm going to times those costs by three. I've got margins, I've got uh, management fees, I've got to pay myself, I've got to run the overheads of the business. It's going to cost me 66 grand to deliver to this to the customer. Now, if you'll notice, what you'll see, a million dollars in sales was actually 500,000 in new sales. For me to charge 66,000 and to potentially aim to generate them 500,000 is a pretty f good, I can swear on my channel, let's do, I'll do what I want. It's a pretty good ROI. And any business that reads this and goes a million in sales of, uh, of 2,000 customers at $500, yeah, that sounds, sounds pretty good. 10% conversion rate of 10,000 new subscribers is 1,000 subscribers. Spending $500 is $500,000. To spend 66,000 to get 500,000, that's pretty good. This is why I say emotion sells, but logic closes. This future here is what they want to look for. They go, ah, oh, this sounds really good. This is the future that I want. This is where they apply logic and they go, okay, that's the logic. Here's what I do. Total, delete that, delete all of that. 66,000, that's as much as it needs to go. That's, as, that's as, as complex and as deep as you need to go. You don't need individualized line items. I, I'm, this is not time scale. I'm going to talk about time scale on another one. This is just pricing. That's as far as you need to go. Remember, the results is what, are what they're getting. That's the future. That's the value that this is worth. This bit of paper for the proposal is worth this bit here. And I want to say to the customer, hey, if you want these kind of results, it's going to cost you 66000 Personally, I think that's a pretty good uh, budget. I reckon you could go 120000 and even then still be good with that. Even if it was just aiming for 500000 and I assumed that they would still generate 500000 on their own budget. And this is not a crazy business. This is not some insane business. This, is, in fact, is taken from a real plug-in business that we're working with. 2,000 sales at $500 per year. They're at, I think, 700 a year at the moment. So we actually just have to increase it to 300. So I played around with the numbers a little bit, but we're going to increase their current sales and their new sales. The big thing that a lot of people say is, okay, 66 grand is a lot of money. What if it fails? And you have to be honest with yourself and go, okay, well, what if it does fail? First of all, are you going to let it fail? 
No, you're going to do everything in your power to make sure that it works, right? If you have the right budget, would you argue that it's easier for you to get results if you've got enough budget to work with? If you had all of that, and let's say you spent half of it, 33,000 on other people, and you still had 33,000 left, would you do everything you could to help this business get along? You absolutely would. You've got plenty of resources. You need to be able to say, I need to generate at least the value of me bringing this back. And all this would cost at this particular customer uh, at $500 is, what's that? 66, that's 120 sales. So if you just help them get 120 sales, they've paid, you've paid for that. That's not that much, is it? So if you just generated 120 sales and they're looking for 2,000, this is also why it's important to pick your customers wisely. A brand new business with no sales, no revenue, no customers, no products, they're never going to pay 66 grand unless they've got funding. And even then, there's going to be a long journey before they're able to break even. So my advice is to go after businesses that you know can afford you. So that's basically how we price a marketing funnel. Here's the most important point. Do not call it a price because a price is a cost center. Instead, what you should be calling it is the investment. What are they going to invest? Now, in fact, if you read this book, Alan actually talks about kind of the three different um, like options, putting in three different options, which I absolutely love. So put in those, uh, put in those different options. Say option one is 66 grand, option two is 75 grand, option three is 120 grand. So you keep going up in price. You start with the minimum one, you start with the minimum level and you never negotiate on price. But I'm going to leave that to Alan. Maybe I'll do a book review on it because I absolutely love this book. In the meantime, guys, thank you very much for watching. I am Mike from sayyourservice.co.uk. Make sure that you like and subscribe or whatever. Let me know in the comments if this has helped your pricing uh, method, if this has helped your pricing methodology, particularly the justification between results and investment. That to me is key. That's what customers are really looking for. If you can make sure that the results or the value are understood and I'll try I'll link this word document below I'll, I'll put a link below uh, and yeah let me know in the comments below if this has helped you understand how you price something that's brand new on a brand new proposal that you've never done before I am Mike from sayyourservice.co.uk I'll have a couple of videos either side that you can watch maybe on proposals and sales letters this kind of stuff uh, thanks very much for watching uh, if you could share this video that would really help me out that would be uh, massively massively useful if you could just share this with, with us, some people that you think would find it useful in the meantime guys I'll speak to you later I'll see you on the next video. Keep building those funnels.